Russia has ordered its troops to withdraw from the key Ukrainian city of Kherson, the highly prized regional capital that it captured in March, right at the start of the invasion. It's being seen as a major blow for Russia and for President Putin. For weeks now, Ukrainian forces have been advancing slowly towards Kherson, keeping up the pressure on Russian forces. Now Russia's commander in Ukraine says it's no longer possible to keep supplying its troops there. It means that they will retreat from the western bank of the river Dnipro, leaving the city and then dig in again further east. This special report is from our international editor Jeremy Bowen, camera journalist Fred Scott and producer Cathy Long, who've spent the last few days with Ukrainians on the front line outside Kherson. For days now, Ukrainian soldiers on the Kherson perimeter have been dismissing reports that the Russians were going to pull back. When we visited a mobile unit on the flatlands between Kherson and Mykolaiv, the closest Ukrainian-controlled city, the soldiers said they wouldn't believe the Russians were leaving until they could see them go. They took us on a mission to attack Russian positions. They guide their Soviet-era artillery with a commercially available drone made in China. Their command car is a 15-year-old BMW imported from Britain. It might have been a veteran of the school run. Now, it's on bomb runs, passing on positions from the drone to adjust the gunner's aim. The Ukrainians claimed direct hits on positions in the large pocket of land Russians control west of the Dnipro River, which they'd have to leave if they pulled out of Kherson city. Leaving Kherson would be a devastating defeat for Russia. It was their biggest single prize since they invaded in February. In Moscow, General Sergei Surovkin, commander of Russian forces in Ukraine, made the announcement. He told a televised meeting of senior military leaders, including the defense minister, that Russia could not properly supply its troops on the west bank of the river. I understand this is a very difficult decision, but at the same time we will preserve the lives of our service personnel and, in general, the combat capability of the group of forces. Ukraine's first response was to warn against premature celebrations. This week, we've been talking to Ukrainian soldiers and Kherson residents to try to gauge the mood there. You can't drive into Kherson from here because there's a front line in the way. And even if you could, the Russians don't allow independent journalists to operate there. So we have to try to piece together what's happening in a city that is, to all intents and purposes, cut off from the outside world. In Mykolaiv, I met a Ukrainian special forces officer who runs what he calls partisan warfare in Kherson. He didn't want to show his identity. He said harassing the occupiers doesn't just mean killing them. The more effective it is, the worse it is for them. It makes them live in constant tension, constant fear. That's our goal, our task. It makes them think. We don't want to conquer, we want to go back to Russia. Some Ukrainians under occupation in Kherson say they have seen changes in the city as rumors circulated this week that the Russians might pull back. For two weeks or more, Kherson has been blocked. There is no crossing from the left bank to the right for civilians. As a result, the food and medicine is not delivered. If this continues for a long time, I don't know what people will eat and how they will receive basic medicine. A few video snapshots of life now in Kherson have been posted. It's a city where Russian rubles circulate alongside Ukraine's currency. And the clocks now run on Moscow time. The Ukrainian soldiers we met at the front line facing Kherson this week were very confident, not losing sleep over Moscow's intentions. With or without the formal withdrawal announcement, these men and their commander 
believed that their flexible, fast operations and continued NATO support cannot be beaten. Step by step, we will reach victory. We will not rush losing people on our way. The Russian troops are scared. They didn't expect so much resistance from our side. Ukrainian soldiers will suspect Russia's motives until they can drive into Kherson. It might be some kind of disinformation strategy, or they believe the Russians might be trying to sucker them into a trap. The fact remains, the hit-and-run war here on the front lines near Kherson goes on. One question. A fighting retreat requires military skills Russia has not demonstrated since the invasion. Will Moscow try to negotiate safe passage out of Kherson for its men? Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Mikolaev. Let's speak now to Steve Rosenberg, our Russia editor who's in Moscow. And Steve, what does this mean for President Putin? Well, if this is really happening, if Russia really has decided to pull out of Kherson, as the generals told the people earlier, then this is big. This is a big blow to the prestige of the Russian authorities. It is embarrassing for Vladimir Putin because Kherson was the only Ukrainian provincial capital that the Russians managed to occupy since they invaded in February. And I remember barely six weeks ago that glittering ceremony in the Kremlin when Vladimir Putin looked so confident and he was signing so many documents and claiming to have annexed Kherson region and three other Ukrainian territories and that these areas would be Russian forever. Well, forever didn't last very long, did it? Now, I watched that announcement on state television earlier, and it was a, a piece of TV theatre. You had the Russian commander reporting to the Russian defence minister and recommending a retreat. The camera cut to the minister who said, I agree, begin the withdrawal. The one actor who was absent from that theatre, from that stage, was President Putin. And that is probably because the Kremlin decided it was a better idea to let the military men deliver the bad news uh, to the Russian people and to distance Vladimir Putin from what many people here will believe to be a major setback. 